This Sunday, 60 Minutes investigates ticking time bombs. They're in nearly every American, major American city. Bridges, roads, rails, and runways are crumbling under our feet. The nightmare scenario unfolded seven years ago. 13 people died in the dramatic collapse of the I-34, W, I-35 W bridge in Minneapolis. Steve Croft traveled to Pittsburgh. That is where three rivers and 4,000 crosses, crossings have engineers and former Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood nervous. According to the government, there's 70,000 bridges that have been deemed structurally deficient. Yep. What does that mean? It means that there are bridges that need to be really either replaced or repaired in a very dramatic way. They're dangerous. I, I don't want to say they're unsafe, but they're dangerous. I would agree with that. If you were going to take me someplace, any place in the country, to illustrate the problem, where would you take me? Well, there's a lot of places we could go. I mean, you could go to any major city in America and see roads and bridges and infrastructure that need to be fixed today. They need to be fixed today. We decided to start in Pittsburgh, which may have the most serious problem in the country. Our guide was Andy Herman, a past president of the American Society of Civil Engineers. From up here, you can see why they call it the city of bridges. Yeah. Between the highway and the railroad bridges, there's a, many of them. And most of them old. Most of them old. They're nearing the end of their useful lives, yeah. yeah. There are more than 4,000 bridges in metropolitan Pittsburgh, and 20% of them are structurally deficient, including one of the city's main arteries. This is the Liberty Bridge ahead. Yes. An important bridge for Pittsburgh? A very important bridge for Pittsburgh. A connection from the south to the city itself and then to the north. It was built in 1928 when cars and trucks were much lighter. It was designed to last 50 years. That was 86 years ago. Every day in Pittsburgh, 5 million people travel across bridges that either need to be replaced or undergo major repairs. One of these arch bridges actually has a structure built under it to catch falling deck. See that structure underneath it? They actually built that to catch any of the falling concrete so it wouldn't hit traffic underneath it. That's amazing. It all comes down to funding. Right now, they can't keep up with it. 300 bridges become structurally deficient each year in the state of Pennsylvania. That's 1% added to the already 23% they already have. They just can't fix them fast enough. Steve Croft joins us now. Good morning. Morning, Charlie. Uh, yep. It, it yep. suggests morning. that it came down to funding. Yeah. Uh, what happened to the funding? Uh, most of it used to come from the uh, Highway Trust Fund, which is funded by the gasoline tax and the federal gasoline tax, 18 cents a gallon. Hasn't been raised since uh, in 21 years, since 1973 was the last time it was How raised. How worried are cities like Pittsburgh? Um, I don't think that I think the engineers in Pittsburgh are really worried. I think the, the mayor of Pittsburgh and I think the people, the public officials know how bad the situation is. I'm not so sure that the public knows how bad the situation is. They will now. Yeah, they, <laughs> they certainly will. will. I remember I covered the Greenwich Bridge collapse back in 1983, Steve, is when that happened. Yeah. And people were so shocked that a chunk of bridge could fall so cleanly. Was there anything that surprised you while doing this story? I think just how bad the situation was. I All knew over? it was Yeah, I knew it was bad, but I didn't know there were 1100 bridges or 70,000 bridges in the United States that were structurally deficient. That's one in nine. That's a lot of bridges. Is there a fix? Is there an easy fix? There's not an easy fix, and I think that's why it's not been done. I think Congress knows uh, that it's a terrible problem, but uh, first of all, the first thing that probably needs to be done and nobody wants to do is the gas tax needs to be raised and it's a you know it's a sure formula to to get beaten i mean in pennsylvania uh tom corbett a republican governor had the courage to raise the gas tax in pennsylvania he was the only republican uh a major republican who lost in the last when you talk election. about infrastructure you're talking about things beyond bridges what else we're talking about ports we're talking about rail and we're also talking about uh water mains uh water treatment plants old gas lines in the cities that go back 100 years. Should we Not be worried? Not necessarily when we're a driving? federal problem, but it's a state local federal problem. Steve, should we be worried when we're getting in the car and driving across a bridge? It's I don't that think bad? I don't think it's I don't think it's that bad because, you know, a lot of things can happen to you when you get in your car and yeah. turn it on. I think I wouldn't I don't think the worst one is that the bridge collapsed, but mm -hmm. the bridge could collapse. All right. Steve Cross, Steve. Thank Thanks you. very much. You can catch Steve's full report Sunday on 60 Minutes. He'll show us the tired little bridge Amtrak calls its Achilles heel. It could take down traffic along the East Coast. That is Sunday nights right here on CBS.